This is the second video lecture for section 2.7 on apportionment. In this lecture, I'll be talking about Hamilton's method and apportionment paradoxes. So we've talked about the apportionment problem in the previous lecture, and the basic idea is we're trying to figure out how to assign seats in a legislature that are based on the population of each state. So the basic idea is to determine what percentage of the total population each state has, and then use that same percentage of the total number of seats available. But the problem is those percentages are usually not whole numbers. So Hamilton's method gives us a way to figure out what whole number of seats to assign to each state. So we're going to compute the fair share for each state. So now remember, fair share just means whatever percentage of the overall population that state has, the fair share is that same percentage of the number of seats. But again, those are usually going to be decimals. So what we're going to do is we're going to round each fair share down. So every single one of those numbers is going to get rounded down. But then that's going to give us probably some leftover seats because all of those rounded down numbers will no longer add up to the total number of seats we have available. So those extra leftover seats that we have, we're going to assign them to the states that had the highest decimal portion of their fair shares. So before we rounded them down, whatever that decimal part was that we got rid of, in order from highest decimal portion to lowest decimal portion, that's where we assign those extra seats. So that seems kind of complicated. I'm going to work through a couple examples where hopefully you'll see it's not so bad. Okay, so we looked at this example in the previous lecture. And so we had our total population. We figured out the percentage population for each state. So now remember, the way that we do this is the percentage population is the population of that state divided by the total population. So how I'm getting those percentages is I grab my calculator and I take this population of the state and I divide it by the total. And that is going to give me a decimal, which I convert to a percentage. And then I multiply that percentage by the total number of seats. So to get the fair share, you multiply the percentage population by the total number of seats. And that's something that's given to you in the problem. So in this case, we had 50 seats. So for state A here, I multiplied the 39.06% by 50, and that gave me the 19.53. OK, so now Hamilton's method says you round each of these numbers down. So 19.53, I round that down to 19. 15.87, I round that down to 15, right? So I'm not rounding to the nearest whole number. I'm just rounding down. So I basically just take that decimal part, chop it off, throw it in the garbage. 10.56, round that down to 10. 4.04, .04, round that down to 4. Now, because I rounded down, the total of these numbers will be less than 50. So again, I grab my calculator, and I'm going to do 19 plus 15 plus 10 plus 4. That works out to be 48 but I'm supposed to assign 50 seats. So now what I know I have is two extra seats. I've got two seats left over that I have to assign to somebody. I've got to assign to these four states. So Hamilton's method says, all right, now look at these decimal parts that you threw in the garbage when you rounded. Which one of those is the highest decimal part? Well, in this case, I've got my 0.87. That's my highest decimal part. So I take my first extra seat and assign it there. What's my next highest decimal part? Well, that's going to be the 0.56. That's the next highest decimal part. So I add my second extra seat to there. Now I'm out of extra seats. I only had two extra seats. I've assigned them both. So now this number is going to add up to 50. So A gets assigned 19 seats. B gets assigned 16 seats. State C gets assigned 11 seats. State D gets assigned four seats. And if I add up those numbers, I get 50. So that's Hamilton's method. Round everything down, but then look at the decimal portions of the fair share, and from highest to lowest, assign whatever number of extra seats you have. So every state gets its fair share, either rounded up or rounded down. The states that had the extra seats assigned to them, that essentially said, well, I rounded down, but then I added one. So that's the same as just rounding up. So the rounded up fair share, we call that the upper quota, and the rounded down fair share is called the lower quota. And the quota rule says that every state should get either its upper quota or its lower quota. It says whatever that fair share is, every state is either going to get that number rounded up or rounded down. And Hamilton's method is just a way of figuring out which states get the rounded up quota and which states get the rounded down quota. OK, let's look at another example. So we've got 60 seats. We've got a country with three states, and we're given the populations here. So now I haven't filled in any of the numbers in this table. So if you want to test yourself, Pause the video, see if you can work this one out on your own. 
Okay, my first step is going to be to add up the populations. I need to know what the total population is because that's one thing that goes into the calculation of the percentage population. So again, I'm going to grab my calculator and I'm going to type 4105 plus 5376 plus 2629. And that's going to give me 12,110. That's my total population. And now I'm going to figure out the percentage populations. So for A, the percentage population of A is going to be the population of A, 4105, divided by this total, 12110. So again, definitely can't do this without a calculator. 4105 divided by 12110 is going to give me 0.33897. So that's going to be 33.897%. And there's no hard and fast rule about how many decimal places to use here. So this time I decided to use three decimal places. The previous time we did this, I used two decimal places. So as long as you're using a couple, of, at least a couple of decimal places to keep things accurate, you're going to be in good shape. So same basic idea for po percentage population of B. So I'm taking the population of B, 5376, divided by 12110. That's going to give me 0.44393. So that's 44.393%. And then finally for C, same basic idea, the population of C, 2629, divided by the total population, 12,110, that's going to give me 0.21709, so 21.709%. And it's a good idea to double check this, but if you add up those percentages, you're going to get 100% or pretty close to 100% because we're only using, we're not using all of the decimal places. So it might add up to, you know, 99.999% or it might add up to 100.001%. That's okay. But this is just a good way to check to make sure that you didn't accidentally write down the wrong digits. Okay, so now for the fair share, what we do is we take that percentage and we multiply it by the total number of seats. In this case, the total number of seats is 60. So these numbers should add up to exactly 60. So I'm going to take the decimal for state A, which is 0.33897, and multiply it by 60. So again, what I'm calculating here is, so the fair share for A is 0.33897. That's what I got when, on my calculator when I computed this number. So that's 0.33897 multiplied by 60. And that's going to be 20.338. Same basic idea, keep going. So the next one is going to be 0.44393 multiplied by 60. That's going to be 26.635. And then finally, for C, 0 0.21709 multiplied by 60 is going to be 13.025. All right, now Hamilton's method says round all of these numbers down. So 20.338 becomes 20. 26.635 becomes 26. So you just take the decimal part, throw it in the garbage. Now we're going to take these rounded down numbers, these lower quotas, and add them up to see, okay, we know we're not going to get 60 because we rounded everything down, so we're going to get something less than 60, but we need to know how many extra seats do we have. So I take 20 plus 26 plus 13, add those up, I get 59. I'm supposed to get 60, so that means I've got one extra seat. Which of these states gets that extra seat? Well, to figure that out, Hamilton says, look at these decimal parts and find the highest decimal part. That's which state gets the first extra seat. Well, 0.635, that's the biggest decimal part. So state B gets the first extra seat, but that's the only extra seat. So that means my totals are going to be 20 seats for state A, 27 seats for state B, 13 seats for state C, and if I add those up, now it adds up to 60. So there's a lot of steps, a lot of punching buttons on your calculator, but hopefully the process makes sense. Now, Hamilton's method is pretty straightforward, but it can lead to some strange paradoxes, and we're going to talk about each of these. So the Alabama paradox is when we increase the number of total seats, but it causes a state to lose seats. The new state's paradox is when we have a new state, but that causes an existing state to gain seats. And then the population paradox is where a state gains population, but loses a seat to a state that doesn't. Okay, so let's talk about the Alabama paradox. So when the population of every state stays the same, but we increase the number of seats, right? So we're not changing the population of the states, but we're saying, oh, you know what? We only had 50 seats, now we're gonna have 55 or something like that. So we would think that if we just have extra seats to, to distribute among the states, 
then every state's number of seats should either stay the same or go up. But that doesn't always happen. So if we have a country like this, we've got our uh, system of four states, we've got 80 seats, and we're just using Hamilton's method here. So if you want, again, another practice problem, you can try to work these numbers out on your own. But we used Hamilton's method, and this is what we came up with. But what I'm going to do now is increase the number of seats to 81. So a lot of numbers on the screen right now, but the top chart is the same chart that I had on the previous slide. And then the second chart here, the bottom chart, is the same population numbers. So notice here that all the population numbers stayed exactly the same, but what I changed was the number of seats. So instead of having 80 seats to distribute, in the second example, I did the exact same Hamilton's process, but I used 81 seats. But now what we're going to notice is that, okay, state A went from 31 seats to 32 seats. That seems reasonable. We increased the total number of seats, and so A got one of the extra seats. All right. And then state B went from 25 to 26. Okay. State C stayed the same. Uh, was started at 17, ended at 17. Again, seems totally reasonable. But now here's the weird thing. State D had seven seats, and then the only thing I changed is I made there be more seats available overall, and then D's number of seats went down from seven to six. That seems a little counterintuitive, and that's why we use the word paradox here. And this actually happened in the United States. After the 1880 census, it was time to reapportion the House of Representatives, right? This happens every 10 years in the United States. We do a census, we count how many people live in each state, and we use that to figure out how many representatives each state gets. So the Census Bureau computed all of the apportionments for all numbers of seats from 275 to 350. Currently, there are 435 members of the House of Representatives, but back in the 19th century, there weren't as many. So what the clerk found was that Alabama would receive eight seats if there were 299 total in the House, but only seven seats if we had 300 available. So going from 299 seats to 300 seats would make Alabama's number of seats go from eight down to seven. So this exact reason is why it's called the Alabama paradox. Another paradox is the new states paradox. If we add a new state to our country, but the total number of seats remains the same, we would expect that the number of seats that that new state gets, it's going to pull those seats from the existing states, right? So we have to have new representatives. We didn't increase the total number of seats. And so that new state's representatives have to come from somewhere. So we assume that they come from the existing states. But that doesn't always happen. So again, let's look at an example. We've got four states, and this time we're going to say the number of seats is 70. And again, a little practice problem on the screen. If you want to work that out on your own, you can do that. But what we're going to do is we're going to keep all of these population numbers. We're not going to change any single one of those population numbers. We're just going to add a new state. We're also not going to change this number 70. The only thing we're going to change is add a new state. So again, lots of numbers on the screen, but what I'm doing is Hamilton's method two different times. And again, notice that all of these population numbers and all of these population numbers are all the same. And the only thing I changed is I added a new state, I. The total number of seats stays the same. So now what happens to each state's distribution? So state E went from 28 down to 27. And again, that should seem sort of reasonable. We created a new state. That new state needs some representatives. Those representatives have to come from somewhere. So that new state took one of the representatives from E. F went from 21 down to 20. Again, seems pretty reasonable. G went from 17 down to 16. Again, makes sense. But now look at H. Before we added a new state, H had four representatives. But after we added a new state, and that new state took some representatives from some of our existing states, but H's distribution went up. H's apportionment went from four seats to five seats. And again, that seems really strange, and that's why we call this a paradox. And again, this actually happened in the United States. In 1907, Oklahoma became a state, and the total number of seats in Congress did not change. We did the apportionment. Oklahoma was assigned five seats, but Maine, the state of Maine, ended up gaining a seat in that reapportionment. So this, again, actually happened in the history of the United States. One more paradox I want to talk about, and that's the population paradox. The idea is that as time goes on, the populations of the states change. Some states gain population, some, some states lose population. But the idea is that states that increase population rapidly should gain the seats that there are over those that do not. But again, that doesn't really always happen. So again, we've got another example here, states J, K, L, and M. 
let's say we've got 100 seats to distribute. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change these population numbers. The population numbers are going to change, but the total number of seats are not going to change. All right, so I've highlighted the changes here. So state K, their population went from 76,200 to 76,400. Not a big change. But the other states remain the same. 28,900 before, 28,900 after. 44,200. And then state L also went up. All right, so this state's population went from 44,200 to 45,000. And then state M didn't change. But I want to compare K and M. So K's population went up, M's population stayed the same. K's population went up, M stayed the same. We didn't change the number of seats, but now K's distribution of seats, K's apportionment, went from 48 down to 47. So K gained population, but lost a seat. M's population stayed the same, and they gained a seat, went from six to seven. And notice that L, even though their population went up even more than K's did, their distribution remained the same. So we can get these sort of strange occurrences, these strange things that happen, even though our, we're looking at the population, we're seeing how those are changing, but the way the seats get distributed seems a little weird. And again, this actually happened in the United States. In 1901, after the 1900 census, when these states were redistributed, Virginia ended up losing a seat to Maine, even though Virginia's population grew at a faster rate. So because of these weird paradoxes that we've seen, there have been several alternatives to Hamilton's method that have been developed. So these methods involve considering the number of people that each seat represents. So it's a little bit different of a way of computing the things that we've been looking at, these fair shares. So looking at each representative and saying how, many, how much population, how many people does each representative actually represent. And then we can modify that number until the number of seats works out to be the total that we want. So we're going to consider that in the next lecture.